The night sky was usually Tommy West's canvas, a peaceful tableau where he'd trace the paths of constellations and imagine navigating the boundless mysteries of space. His fascination with the cosmos was rooted in the bedtime stories his grandfather used to tell him about astronauts and distant galaxies. Now at 12, with his small backyard telescope, he felt closer than ever to those distant stories. It was a clear, crisp night in late September, and Tommy was set up for his usual stargazing routine in the backyard. The neighborhood was quiet, with only the occasional bark of a distant dog breaking the silence. His parents were inside watching television, blissfully unaware of the monumental event about to unfold. As Tommy adjusted his telescope, a peculiar shimmer caught his eye. It wasn't the familiar twinkle of a star or the steady light of a passing plane. These were abrupt flashes, like metallic surfaces reflecting sunlight, but much more intense and at odd intervals. He refocused his telescope, his heart racing as the shapes became clearer. Sleek, metallic objects, descending in a controlled, silent glide through Earth's atmosphere. Mom! Dad! Tommy shouted, not taking his eyes off the scope. His voice was a mix of excitement and a growing, unsettling realization that something unprecedented was happening. His parents, startled by his alarm, rushed outside. What's it, Tommy? His father asked, his voice tinged with concern. Tommy stepped aside, allowing his dad to look through the telescope. His mother clutched the back of his chair, her face turning pale as she peered upward at the naked sky where faint outlines of the unknown ships could be seen with the naked eye. We need to call someone. Anyone, she muttered, pulling out her phone with trembling hands. Tommy was back at the telescope, adjusting the lens to get a better look. The ships were unlike anything he'd ever seen or read about. They were streamlined and elegant, yet undeniably alien. They moved with purpose, their formations too precise, too deliberate to be anything but a coordinated invasion force. Within minutes, the quiet night erupted into chaos. Sirens wailed in the distance as emergency broadcasts interrupted all regular programming. The television in Tommy's living room now showed shaky footage of similar ships appearing over cities around the globe. The anchor's voice was a mix of confusion and fear, urging people to stay indoors and await further instructions. Tommy watched as his world changed forever. The stars above, once symbols of wonder and possibility, were now overshadowed by the ominous silhouettes of alien ships. This was first contact but not as anyone had hoped. It was clear the aliens hadn't come for a peaceful exchange. They were here as conquerors. In the days following the first contact, the world scrambled to respond. Governments issued emergency declarations while the military mobilized with a sense of urgency that matched the global panic. The skies buzzed with fighter jets, and cities braced for what might come next. However, despite their best efforts, human weapons and tactics seemed woefully inadequate against the alien technology. Amidst this turmoil, Tommy and his family were evacuated along with their entire neighborhood to a nearby military base. It was a hub of frenetic activity, filled with families and individuals all looking for safety and answers. The base, usually closed to the public, was now overflowing with civilians housed in makeshift accommodations. Tommy found himself wandering around the base one afternoon, trying to get a glimpse of anything that might tell him more about the situation. The hangars were busy with aircraft being prepped for sorties, and soldiers moved about with a mix of determination and nervousness. In the mess hall, while trying to eat the bland military rations, Tommy sat near a group of officers. Their conversation was a mix of strategy and resignation, discussing the failure of every attempt to counter the alien advance. It's like fighting ghosts one officer said. Every time we think we've got a lock on them, they vanish or our weapons just fail. Tommy's curiosity got the better of him. Has anyone tried talking to them? He piped up, surprising himself with his own boldness. The table went quiet. The officers looked at him, a mix of amusement and surprise on their faces. Finally, an older man with a grizzled beard and a kind face turned to him. And what would you say to them, young man? Tommy shrugged. I don't know, but maybe they're not just here to fight. Maybe they want something we haven't figured out yet. The man chuckled, but his eyes were thoughtful. You've got guts, kid. I'm Captain Marks, retired Air Force. What's your name? Tommy West, he replied, shaking the offered hand. Tommy, that's some outside-the-box thinking. You ever consider a career in diplomacy? Captain Marks joked, but his tone was approving. Their conversation was interrupted by an announcement calling all personnel to prepare for another briefing. 
The officers excused themselves and Captain Marks gave Tommy a nod. Keep thinking, Tommy. Sometimes the best ideas come from where you least expect them. Inspired by the captain's words, an idea began to take shape in Tommy's mind. He remembered the old observatory on the outskirts of town, abandoned and mostly forgotten, but possibly still equipped with communication devices that might be capable of intercepting or even sending signals to the alien ships. Later that day, Tommy sought out Captain Marks and shared his idea. What if we could use the observatory to learn more about them, maybe even talk to them? Marks was intrigued. It's a long shot, but at this point, long shots are all we have left. Let me talk to some folks. With Captain Marks's endorsement, Tommy's idea was presented to the base commander. The observatory was outside the immediate danger zone, but close enough to make the mission feasible. After some deliberation, weighed against the backdrop of continuous unsuccessful military engagements, the commander approved the plan. Tommy, Captain Marks, and a small team of military technicians were quickly dispatched to the observatory. It was a race against time, as the alien presence on Earth continued to grow, unchallenged by conventional human defenses. As Tommy, Captain Marks, and the team approached the old observatory, the setting sun cast long shadows over the building, giving it an almost mystical appearance. The observatory, once a bustling center for celestial studies, had been long abandoned, succumbing to the slow encroachment of nature. Vines crept up the stone walls, and the once shiny dome was tarnished by years of neglect. Captain Marks led the team through the creaking doors, their steps echoing in the empty halls. This place used to be state-of-the-art, he mused, a hint of sadness in his voice for better days past. The team set to work immediately, clearing debris and setting up their equipment. Tommy was tasked with trying to get the old communication systems back online. With help from a couple of tech-savvy soldiers, they pried open panels and reconnected wires, breathing life back into the dormant technology. As the screens flickered on and systems started humming, Tommy felt a surge of hope. The main goal was to intercept any form of communication from the alien ships, whether it be audio, visual, or data transmissions. The technicians installed software to analyze and decode signals. But it was Tommy's intuition that guided them towards using older, simpler radio frequency bands. His reasoning was simple. While everyone else was looking for complex solutions, perhaps the answer lay in something overlooked, something as fundamental as radio waves. Hours turned into night, and the team worked by the light of their computer screens and the occasional flashlight. Tommy, fueled by a mix of adrenaline and caffeine from too many sodas, kept tweaking the setup, aligning satellite dishes, and adjusting frequencies. Then a breakthrough happened just before dawn. A series of strange, patterned bursts of static came through the speakers. The patterns were consistent and repeated every few seconds. That's it, that's gotta be something, Tommy shouted, his exhaustion momentarily forgotten. The team recorded the signals and began the arduous task of decoding. It was like trying to solve the most complex puzzle without knowing what the final picture was supposed to look like. But Tommy remembered something his grandfather had taught him about patterns in nature and music. He suggested applying similar principles to the signal analysis, breaking down the patterns into repeating sequences and variations. This approach proved effective. Slowly, the data began to make sense. They were indeed communications, structured and deliberate. Tommy's gamble on using basic, almost primitive methods had paid off. With this new information, Tommy proposed the next phase of his plan. We should try to send a response. Maybe we can establish some kind of dialogue. Captain Marks was initially skeptical but saw the potential. You're suggesting we talk to them, kid? After they've come down here with all their might? Yes, Tommy insisted. Maybe they're talking because they want to negotiate, not just attack. We've tried fighting and it hasn't worked. We have to try something new. After some debate, the team agreed. They began crafting a simple message, a greeting in the mathematical language of prime numbers and basic geometric shapes, something they hoped would be universally understood as a peaceful gesture. As the first hints of morning light crept over the horizon, they transmitted their response. Now all they could do was wait, the fate of their world hanging in the balance, hinging on the hope that their call would be answered. The team waited in tense silence, their eyes fixed on the monitors. Minutes stretched into hours with no response. Tommy paced back and forth, trying to maintain his composure but feeling every tick of the clock as a heavy weight. 
Captain Marks watched him, his expression thoughtful. Patience, Tommy, he said softly. In times like these, patience can be the bravest thing you do. Tommy nodded, knowing he was right, but his heart couldn't help racing. Every part of him wanted this to work, not just to prove his idea was valid, but to avoid the imminent conflict he feared would devastate his world. As the sun climbed higher, bringing light to their cramped and cluttered space, the equipment suddenly crackled to life. A new series of transmissions began to come through. The patterns were different this time, more complex and varied. The team sprang into action, recording and analyzing the incoming data. Using the lexicon they had started to assemble from the earlier transmissions, Tommy and the technicians worked tirelessly to translate the messages. The process was painstaking, with each snippet of decoded text revealing only fragments of meaning. But as they pieced together these fragments, a clearer picture began to emerge. The aliens, known as the Scar, communicated their intentions and perceptions of Earth. They viewed humans as primitive and weak, easy to conquer. Yet within the harsh judgments there was a hint of desperation. The Scar spoke of resource scarcity, environmental degradation, and a dying civilization searching for a new home. Tommy felt a mix of emotions wash over him, fear, pity, and a renewed sense of urgency. They're not just invaders, he mused aloud. They're survivors like us. They need help. Captain Marks looked at him, his expression complex. That's a generous way to see it, Tommy. But how do you propose we use this information? Tommy thought for a moment, then replied, We need to show them we're not just a planet to be conquered. We can be allies. Maybe we can offer them something they need in exchange for peace. The idea was bold, and it required a leap of faith that the Scar would be willing to negotiate. But with the translated messages in hand, they now had a better understanding of the Scar's language and potentially their needs. Armed with this new knowledge, Tommy proposed a second message. This time it was more direct, addressing the Scar's needs and proposing a meeting to discuss a possible alliance. The message included terms of peace and coexistence, drafted with the cautious optimism that the Scar might listen. Once again, the team sent their message into the cosmos, hoping for a peaceful response. The waiting began anew, but this time with a different air. There was hope, tinged with the real possibility of understanding and compromise. Hours later the reply came. The Scar's response was cautious but open. They agreed to meet, to talk, to negotiate. Tommy's heart leapt. His wild idea, born out of desperation and a deep belief in the power of communication, had led to this moment. The base commander was informed and preparations began for what would be humanity's first diplomatic encounter with an alien race. Tommy was at the heart of it all, a young boy who dared to look beyond conflict to find a path to peace. The world watched with bated breath as the appointed day arrived for humanity's first official diplomatic encounter with the Scar. The location chosen for the meeting was neutral ground, a deserted island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, deemed secure and remote enough to ensure both parties could meet without threat of immediate conflict. Tommy, accompanied by Captain Marks, was part of the small delegation that included top diplomats, scientists, and military advisors. The young boy felt the weight of the moment deeply. His actions and words could potentially shape the future of his planet. The SCAR delegation arrived precisely on time, their ship descending silently onto the island like a giant steel bird of prey. The sight was awe-inspiring and terrifying, reminding everyone of the power and advanced technology these aliens possessed. As the Scar disembarked, their appearance was revealed in full for the first time. They were tall, with angular features and a silvery skin that seemed to shimmer in the sunlight. Their movements were graceful yet unnervingly precise, like finely tuned machines. Tommy couldn't help but feel a pang of fear, but he steadied himself, remembering his crucial role. The negotiations began under a large tent that had been erected for the talks. The atmosphere was tense with each word and gesture weighed and measured. Tommy sat at the negotiation table, his device ready to assist with translations. His proficiency with the SCAR language had improved remarkably, making him an invaluable bridge between the two species. The SCAR were initially reserved, their tone formal and their demands high. They wanted access to Earth's resources, water, minerals, and vast tracts of land. In exchange, they offered knowledge of their technology, which could help solve many of Earth's looming environmental crises. Tommy listened, 
translating and slowly understanding more than just the words. He sensed the desperation behind the scar's demands. They were not just conquerors, they were survivors, looking for a haven in a universe that had been cruel to them. The turning point came when Tommy decided to share more personal thoughts. With permission from the lead diplomat, he spoke directly to the scar, telling them about Earth, about humanity's resilience and spirit, and about our capacity for compassion and cooperation. He talked about the potential of working together, not just for survival, but for thriving. The lead scar, Commander Zelth, who had been stern throughout the proceedings, finally softened. Young Earthling, Zelth responded, his voice resonating with a new tone of respect. Your words are unlike those we have heard from your leaders. You speak of hope and future, concepts we thought your kind incapable of considering seriously. Encouraged, the human delegation adjusted their approach, offering a more balanced proposal. Earth would help the Scar with resettlement in uninhabited areas, ensuring they could live without disrupting human populations. In return, the Scar would share their advanced technology aiding in Earth's efforts to combat environmental degradation and resource shortages. After hours of intense discussion, an agreement was drafted, a tentative first step towards a shared future. Both parties signed the treaty with a sense of achievement and relief. Tommy, despite his exhaustion, felt a surge of pride. He had made a difference, not through force, but through understanding and empathy. As the delegations parted, there was a sense of cautious optimism. Tommy had shown that even the youngest defender could play a pivotal role in the destiny of his world. The alien ships retreated from the cities, settling instead on the agreed-upon territories, as the first joint projects began to take shape. After the successful negotiations, Tommy found himself thrust into a role that few could have predicted. A liaison between humanity and the Scar. His unique position as a young but pivotal figure in the peace talks had caught the attention of both the media and the leaders around the world. His insight into the SCAR language and his empathetic approach to communication were now seen as vital assets in the fragile coexistence that Earth and the SCAR were trying to build. Tommy was invited to the United Nations, where he addressed a packed assembly about the importance of empathy and innovation in diplomacy. His speech was broadcast globally, resonating with many and inspiring hope during a time of great uncertainty. We stand at a crossroads, Tommy said his voice steady despite the sea of seasoned diplomats and world leaders before him. We can choose the path of conflict, as we have so often in our history, or we can forge a new path, one of partnership and shared destiny. We have much to teach the Scar, but we have equally much to learn from them. His words were met with applause, and more importantly, with action. Programs were initiated to integrate Scar technology with human innovation. The Scar, for their part, began to open up about their history and culture sharing stories of their planet's demise, which served as a stark warning for Earth about the dangers of environmental neglect. Meanwhile, Tommy continued his education, but his curriculum was anything but typical. It included advanced studies in linguistics to further his proficiency in the SCAR language and diplomacy, where he learned the nuances of intercultural communication. He spent part of his time at the newly established Earth SCAR Cultural Exchange Center, which became a hub for both species to learn from each other. The challenges were manifold. Not everyone on Earth was ready to accept the scar, and there were incidents of tension and protests against the aliens' presence. But every time such challenges arose, Tommy was there, reminding both humans and scar of the bigger picture. His age and genuine enthusiasm for a shared future helped to disarm many of the critics. One particular incident tested Tommy's role as a peacemaker. A misunderstanding at a joint resource facility led to a standoff between human workers and SCAR technicians. The dispute was over resource allocation, a sensitive subject given the scarcity of certain materials. Tommy was called to the site, where he found both groups separated and in a heated argument. Using his knowledge of both cultures, Tommy facilitated a discussion, helping each side articulate their concerns and finding a common ground. His ability to translate not just the language but the emotions and cultural significance behind the words helped diffuse the situation. We must remember, Tommy said, addressing both groups, that misunderstandings are not just a chance to assert our differences but an opportunity to understand our similarities. We all want to feel safe, respected, and heard. His intervention led to a new protocol for joint operations, 
emphasizing communication and shared decision-making. As Earth and the Scar continued to navigate their partnership, Tommy's role grew. He wasn't just a former young stargazer. He was now a symbol of a new era of diplomacy and understanding. His story was taught in schools, used as an example of how courage, curiosity, and a willingness to communicate can change the world. In the years that followed, as the partnership between Earth and the Scar strengthened, the benefits became undeniable. Earth was healing, with the help of Scar technology, and the Scar were finding a new home, away from the destruction of their own planet. Tommy, having grown into a young man, continued to work at the forefront of this interspecies relationship, driven by a vision of the cosmos not as a frontier of conflict, but as a shared home.